Welcome to MAPC3 Configuration Part 4. Today we're going to be covering the ECU configuration tabs um, across the back of the Configure ECU3 uh, screen, starting with Launch Control. There are three parameters associated with Launch Control. The RPM limit, which is the RPM that Launch Control will attempt to hold the engine when enabled. Uh, a minimum speed value which is an, a frequency and it's the speed at which uh, launch control will release so this allows launch control to be maintained and mis continue misfiring the engine until a minimum wheel speed is attained in order to minimize wheel spin you can also set a ignition timing retard from 0 to 30 degrees during launch control in order to function like an anti-lag and build boost in the turbo Obviously, you need to be careful that you're not um, overheating turbos and so forth, but it is a useful feature. In conjunction with these parameters, you need to configure a launch control input. In this case, we've got the LC switch configured to the MAF input. If you consult the MAF ECU3 uh, PDF manual on the CD-ROM and our website, you'll be able to find the wiring diagram for the LC switch, uh, clutch input. So if we set these launch control parameters and go to the dashboard, we then enable the um, launch control function. You'll see LC displayed on the dashboard. That means launch control is active and the vehicle will be um, misfiring against the rev limit at, uh, in this case, 4,500 RPM until launch control function is disabled, usually from a clutch switch or a manually operated dash switch. The next function we're going to talk about now is the speed cut and speed adjust. There are two functions in one using a um, speed input on the KVF input and switched output number three allows you to configure a cut or remove a speed cut which is the first value and also a speed adjustment which is a, a way of altering um, speed based on different wheel sizes and so forth so a value of 100 or 1 sorry, if I put on 1 in this box means that there is no speed adjust if I want to adjust it down, reduce the speed, I can put in a 0.99 value for example and that will adjust to 99% of the input. There are two speed increments you'll see in the help text and that's configured in the IO section again. You can configure the KVF input to speed, SPD, and then the switched output 3 is the output function. You've got speed low or speed high. If you select speed high Go back to ECU configuration, speed. You'll notice that the frequency is now up to a maximum of 10,000 hertz. If we select speed low, the speed is now in the range of 1 to 250. So this is to cater for different types of vehicles and speeds. The next function is a unique MAP ECU 3 function. Uh, especially in piggyback world, it's called Lean Boost Retard. Lean Boost Retard is a protection mechanism that allows you to retard ignition timing uh, when you have a wide band connected to the MAP ECU 3 and you experience a lean condition. So you can set at what point in boost you want to have the Lean Boost Retard um, initiate, so what's the minimum pressure. So for example, anything over 10 PSI for example, if the air fuel ratios are anything leaner than say 12 to 1, it will then retard ignition timing by 0 to 30 degrees, so in this case perhaps 30 degrees. There's another option in conjunction with lean boost retard, you can have it an indicator. You can configure one of the switched outputs to be LBR, lean boost retard, so you can run a light like a shift light but in this case a protection light to indicate there's a problem. 
Now again, this is a um, unique feature of the MAP ECU-3 and we believe in any other piggyback uh, and that lean breast retard is, is something we don't believe is available in the market. The other screen which we've talked about a little bit is the input-output mapping screen. We've referenced that a few times. Essentially you have a digital input, a KVF input. If you hover over the said function it will um, provide you the pinout, in which case for example math wire is the uh, orange wire on the 16 way, the external map sensor input is the white wire on the 3 way, TPS is the brown wire on the 16 way, O2 input is the yellow wire on the 16 way harness and so forth. Now one of the things that's changed with uh, Map EC3 and version 3.4 of the software is you can remap the TPS inputs and O2 inputs to any function. So from the drop down it can be changed into a fuel cut defeat, an O2 adjust, wideband input and so forth. So essentially you've got inputs on the left hand side and outputs on the right hand side. Um, MAF input, external MAF input, TPS, O2, analog input 1 are all analog or variable voltage from 0 to 5 volt. The MAF output analog 1, 2 and 3 are all analog 0 to 5 volt outputs that can be configured independently and switched output 1, 2 and 3 are digital outputs but they're also high current outputs that can drive for, um, for example relays, solenoids and fuel injectors. So you'll see there's a number of the functions that we've talked about before. Um, pressure switch, nitrous, RPM switch. The auxiliary injector is driven by the um, switched outputs 1, 2 and 3. And then <clears throat> you can actually configure all three outputs to be injectors if you so wish. So you can drive up to six high impedance injectors by paralleling two high impedance on each of the injector outputs. Injector uh, switched output 2 also is used exclusively for the alternate boost control solenoid and there's another function which is not talked about much but is used in some vehicles especially older ones with flap airflow meters is RPM 0. RPM 0 pulls low switches to ground when RPM is more than 0. It's generally used to enable a fuel pump function uh, because some of the older flap airflow meters had a switch in them to as a safety mechanism so if the ignition was left on but there was no airflow it switched off the fuel pump so that's what that functions for. Uh, as I said before you've got the pressure switch function which you can figure elsewhere nitrous one electronic boost control the RPM switch fuel auxiliary fuel injector nitrous two Lean boost retard, and they are all the options on um, switched outputs one and two, and also um, switched output three is a little unique. It's got speed outputs, um, and switched output one has one unique output, which was added in this version of MapCal called IGF, which is ignition or igniter feedback. This is very important for launch control to function correctly. You connect the IGF back into the OEM ECU to make it think that all the cylinders are firing normally. Uh, particularly on Toyotas, you'll notice that Toyota Supras, for example, have a igniter with an IGF output back to the OEM ECU. The 7G, 7M GTE Supra has it as well. And for launch control to operate correctly, you must wire the IGF signal. The last tab on this screen is Wi-Fi, which is brand new for these versions of MapCal. We set the IP address and subnet mask for the Wi-Fi module and the channel, and you do not um, change from these. These are the defaults. You can change the channel, uh, but we recommend you do not change the IP address because the iPhone app is actually um, written to use those IP addresses. So that covers all the ECU configuration functions uh, now. Thank you.